Let's discover the single post and archive options. To properly show how these options work, let's navigate to a single post. The first option is hide categories. In some cases, categories can be an overkill. On small sites, you may not need to organize posts in categories at all, and so you may end up with a dummy link to the uncategorized category on each post. Not the best. So, in order to save you some time hacking the theme files, this option allows to instantly remove categories from the single post template and from the archives templates. Similarly, the next option is hide post author. This is useful, for example, if you do have just a single author contributing to the articles of the site, then it could make sense to hide it. Below, we have another option to hide the post date. Moreover, there is also an option to instantly add some sharing buttons after the post content. These sharing buttons are extremely lightweight, fully HTML based, and do not use JavaScript at all. They can be a nice add-on to your posts without requiring a plugin and without adding any kind of bloat to the site. In case you want to customize those buttons, check out the file called templatetags.php. You can copy the function called pico strap the sharing buttons to your child things function.php file and modify it to your needs. Okay, now let's go back to the customizer overview and discover what's next. This customizer section starts with two text areas. The first one is labeled add code to header. If you place some code here, it will be added to head element of all pages of the site. Below, we have another text area labeled add code to footer. Code inserted here will be added before the closing of the body tag. There are a number of cases in which these fields can be useful. The most typical is when you need to add some analytics or tracking code to the site. As an example, let's show how to add the Google Tag Manager code to your site. Of course, we assume you have already signed up to the service. First, let's open the Google Tag Manager website and click Install Google Tag Manager. The first field in here is showing the code for the header. Let's click the copy icon so the code is automatically copied to the clipboard. Now let's go back to PicoStrap and paste the header code in the relevant field. And then let's go again to the Tag Manager screen and grab the code for the body tag. As a side note, please consider that although Google is recommending to use this code after the opening of the body tag, it will equally work also if placed down below. Let's click the copy icon of the second code field. Okay, now back to Pico Strap. Let's paste in the footer code field. Just click the publish button and you're done. Google Tag Manager is now installed. No need for any extra plugin. Now let's go to the next options of this panel down below where it says font loading header code. It's generally not necessary to know this feature, unless you have a very specific need of customizing the way fonts are imported by the theme, but it can be useful nevertheless. First of all, please note that this field is initially empty. If you do select a Google font in the typography options, something will appear in here. Let's do it now. Let's go to the typography section and set a Google font as the base font family, for example, a Paya Liber. Please note that inside the font chooser window, we can only pick a single font weight. We'll choose the default value, 400, and confirm. Now, let's navigate again to the header slash footer code section of the customizer to see what's happened here. As you can see, now the font loading header code field has been populated. This code is automatically added to the head of your pages and is basically what's responsible for actually loading the font into your web pages. So this field is useful as a feedback, but from Pico Strap version 2 onwards, it is also manually editable in case you want to tweak things. We'll see in a minute why this could be useful, but let's quickly finish the panel overview. Below this field, there is an option called Load Google Fonts Anonymously. Now, as you may know, Google Fonts can be an issue for GDPR compliance in Europe. Checking this option, 
Google Fonts will be loaded from an alternative anonymous server, the privacy-compliant Coolabs font repository. As you can see, ticking the box, you'll see that the font loading code will change and will no longer reference Google servers. Further below, there's another checkbox labeled Disable the font loading in header. Ticking the box will prevent the code above to be automatically added to the header. It's mostly useful for debugging and legacy reasons. Let's just try it for one second to see what happens. Okay, the font does not show properly. This makes sense, of course. Now, let's move on to another hot topic. Let's talk about how to load multiple font weights. Now, as you can see, looking at the font loading code, we're now just referencing the 400 weight of the Apaya Labor font. Let's open the Google Fonts website from the link in the description and let's search for Apaya Libre. Now let's click on View All Styles. Here on the left side, as you can see, various styles are listed. This font supports 400, 500, 600, 700, and 800. Let's imagine that we do need all of them in our design. We click the plus icon on each desired one. While we do this, see that Google is preparing a font loading code on the right side for us. Now after adding all the weights, you need to copy the entire code or just the family parameter. Then go back to Pico Strap and paste it inside the font loading field. You can see the font loads up properly in the preview. Very well. So now we've finished with this customizer panel. Let's go back to the customizer overview and discover what's next. Now let's discover the global utilities panel. Here you can find a handful of checkboxes enabling some useful extras. The first option, labeled Disable Gutenberg, does completely disable the Gutenberg block content editor, removing its CSS as well. The classic WordPress content editor will be enforced. Of course, this option does only make a difference on posts and pages where you're not using Live Canvas. The second option, labeled Disable the Block-Based Widgets Editor, as the description says, does disable the new Block-Based Widgets Editor and restores the classic Widgets Editor. Below, there's an option called Disable the WordPress Comment System. This will completely eradicate the entire WordPress comments feature. It can help quite a bit to keep your site spam-free and more secure. The next option, Disable XNO, RPC, shuts off another of those WordPress mechanisms that few of us care for. Further below, there is another option that allows to disable the SCSS, automatic compiling, and the live reload feature. Let's recap how the Pico Strap built-in SAS compiler feature works. We covered this in the first videos, by the way. Basically, by default, when this checkbox is not enabled, the Pico Strap theme will check every few seconds if there are modifications to the theme's SAS folder using an AJAX request. This happens only when you're logged in as an administrator. If any modification is detected in the SAS folder, Pico Strap will recompile the files. On the other hand, if you enable this option, this mechanism is completely disabled, and from version 2.0 of the theme, it's done only once upon every page reload. So, especially if you don't plan editing your SAS files, it can make sense to enable this checkbox. It will save some server resources. Won't be a difference for unlogged users. Moreover, we have a section called Opt-in Extra Features. The first option here enables a back-to-top button to your site. This is achieved using simple and lightweight vanilla JavaScript. Finally, there is an option to enable a lightbox for viewing gallery or linked images. It adds the G Lightbox library, which is implemented lazily loading its own CSS and JavaScript files, so there is no real added weight to the site. Please refer to the notes if you need to learn how to precisely control the lightbox. Okay guys, that's it. I hope this video has been useful for you. If this was the case, I'd really appreciate if you'd click the like button. By the way, in order not to miss our next updates, please subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.